All right, implicit differentiation and related rates, section 2.11. So what happens is sometimes our functions or our, our equations aren't written as y equals something. Um, so you could try to solve for y and then take the derivative. Um, however, sometimes it's nearly impossible or impossible to solve for y. So we have what's called implicit differenti differentiation. And um, what this, how this works is instead of, well actually it works very similarly to um, a regular, taking the derivative of a regular equation, y equals to something. Uh, it, essentially you're taking the derivative of both sides. Uh, however, there's a little bit more work to do. Um, you're still trying to find the y prime, the derivative of y. So let's take a look. If we look at the left side and the right side of this equation, and um, oh, there's one important thing to keep in mind. Um, so y is a function of x, so, and, and we don't know what that function is. So we don't know what y is. But whenever we take the derivative of y, we gotta think of it sort of like we do with the chain rule. So y is some function. So y might be, for instance, maybe it'll help you to think about it this way. Think of y being like x squared or some other function. So if I have y to the fifth power, for instance, and I wanna take the derivative of that, I need to use the chain rule. So the derivative would be y, five y to the fourth as usual, but I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the actual derivative of y. And uh, that might not make a whole lot of sense at first, but hopefully as we go on it will. All right, so taking the derivative of x to the fourth, that's gonna be four x cubed, the same as usual. And the derivative of y to the fourth is gonna be four y cubed. So it's very similar, except remember y, we, y is some function of x itself. So we have to multiply by the derivative of its inside, so the derivative of whatever y is. And then the derivative of 82 is zero. And now we're gonna solve this for y prime. So I would subtract both sides, uh, or 4x cubed on both sides. So we have 4y cubed y prime equals 4x cubed. And then divide by 4y cubed on both sides. and simplify. So we see that the um, the fours are both gonna, oops, this should be a negative. Sorry about that. When we subtract it over, it's negative. Uh, so the fours are gonna divide out and we're left with negative x cubed over y cubed. The next example is very similar. So we get three x squared plus three y squared. And you just wanna remember, okay, if I'm taking the derivative of something with y, I need to add y prime onto it. Well, not add, multiply. y prime, and then the derivative of negative 10 is zero. So again, we wanna subtract the three x squared on both sides. We get negative three x squared. Divide by three y squared on both sides. and divide, divide out those threes and we get negative x squared over y squared. And you can probably start to see a pattern here when we had x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, we ended up with negative x cubed over y cubed. And when we had um, x to the third plus y to the third, we ended up with negative x squared over y squared. So if I asked you to do x to the fifth plus y to the fifth equals some number, you can probably guess what that answer would be. All right, C is going to be a little bit more complicated. So uh, let's start taking the derivative. We're going to get negative 240x to the seventh. So that's the derivative, same as normal. 
Now the next term is actually um, a product, so we need the product rule here. So we take the derivative of the first part, 5x to the 45th power. I get 225 x to the 44th power, so that's the derivative of the first, and we multiply that by the second, and then we're going to add the derivative of the second, which is y prime, times the first, so 5 y prime x to the 45th. So this whole part here is using the product rule. And then last term on that side is going to be 10y to the 9th. Don't forget to multiply by your y prime. And the derivative of any constant is just 0. So anything that doesn't have a y prime in it, um, so that would be this term and this term, we're going to subtract those to the other side. So 5y prime x to the 45th power plus 10y to the 9th y prime is equal to positive 240x to the 7th minus 225x to the 44th times y. And we're trying to get y prime by itself, um, trying to solve for y prime. So let's go on and go ahead and factor that y prime out of both of those terms. And what's left, uh, actually we can, um, we can take a 5 out as well. So let's take a 5y prime. Actually, no, we don't want to do that. Most of the time in factoring, you do want to factor anything out that you can, but in this case, it's just going to make it harder. So what's left is 5x to the 45th power plus 10y to the 9th. And now um, to get y prime by itself, we would divide both sides by this 5x to the 45th power plus 10y to the 9th. So of course on this side, it's just all going to divide out. And on the other side, um, nothing special happens. We can't simplify that. Um, well, we could actually take a 5 out of all of them divide out of 5, but um, for the purposes of this course, we're not going to worry about that. If you get this far, you've done enough. Example B, we have 17x to the 5th plus x, 8x to the 34th y plus y to the 9th equals 26. All right, so we're going to get um, 85x to the 4th. Middle term we need the um, product rule for. So the derivative of the first is going to be 272x to the 33rd power times the second, and then plus the derivative of the second, which is y prime, times the first. And we just don't want to stick a number in the middle there, so I'm putting the, the 8 on the outside. And then plus 9y to the 8th. Don't forget to multiply by y prime equals 0. Now, one thing that students often forget is that the derivative of a constant is 0. So don't forget to get rid of that number out there. 
Anything that doesn't have a y prime in it, we're going to put on the other side. So we're left with 8y prime x to the 34th power plus 9y to the 8th y prime is equal to negative 85 x to the 4th minus 272 x to the 33 y. Take out a y prime and we're left with 8x to the 34th plus 9y to the 8th. And we're going to divide both sides by what's in parentheses. On the left, it's going to all divide out, and on the right, we're just left with this kind of nasty looking rational expression. And that's that. So this also lends itself the idea, um, you know, you think of y being a function of, of x, so whenever we take the derivative of y, we multiply by y prime, um, and that's just using the chain rule. So if we look at an application, a spherical snowball is melting in such a way that the radius is decreasing at a rate of 0.2 centimeters per minute. At what rate is the volume of the snowball decreasing when the radius is 13 centimeters? Okay, so what's happening is when you have a snowball and it's melting, so not only is the the volume of the snowball getting smaller, but so is the radius at the same time. And we're asked to find at what rate the volume of the snowball is decreasing when radius is 13. Now rate means derivative, so we want to find V prime, where V is, is volume. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to come up with a function, V of T. Well, volume of a sphere is 4 thirds. We don't really have to come up with one because we have a volume formula. So 4 thirds pi um, r cubed. All right, and to take the derivative of that, with respect to t, okay, so notice that, you know, we have two variables happening here, an r and a t, but r is a function of time, or radius is a function of time. Both of them are. So uh, the 3 comes down and it's going to divide out and we just get 4 um, pi r squared. But remember, just like with the y's, the radius is a function of time also. We don't know what that function is, so we have to multiply by r prime. And we want to know when um, when the rate of the volume of the snow, the, what the rate of the, <laughs> at what rate the volume of the snowball is decreasing when the radius is 13 centimeters. So we can plug in 13 centimeters for R and they actually give you the R prime right here. Radius is decreasing at a rate of 2 centimeters per minute. So I can plug in, or 0.2 centimeters per minute. I can plug in 0.2 for R prime, punch all the numbers in my calculator, and I should come up with 424.74. And that would be centimeters cubed per minute.
Now the area of a healing wound is given by A equals pi r squared, which is the area of a circle. And the radius is decreasing at a rate of 5 millimeter per day at the moment when r equals 45. How fast is the area decreasing at that moment? So we're trying to find A prime of T because it's talking about a moment. So um, A of T is going to be pi r squared. And we can get away with that because we know that radius is also a function of time. So a prime of t is going to be 2 pi r times r prime. And plug in the numbers that they gave us. So r is 45 and r prime is 5. Punch it in your calculator and you're going to come up with about 1413.7167 and this is going to be millimeters squared per day alright next problem <clears throat> a company is uh, selling widgets has found that the number of items sold X depends upon the price P which they're sold according to this equation uh, and the equation is X equals might not be clear that this says equals 90,000 over the square root of 6 P plus 1 due to inflation and increasing health benefit costs the company has been increasing the price by three dollars per month Find the rate at which the revenue is changing when the company is selling widgets at $260 each. So we need to find our prime. Um, and let's see, that's going to be of, our, of X. Alright, so that's our goal. And we're given the price. You now revenue, um, revenue is going to be equal to price times number sold. So if we put that together, we get that R of X is equal to 90,000 P over, because we have to multiply everything by, oh, sorry, wrong variable, and not the right number either. So 90,000 X, just multiply the equation they gave us by X. And I'm going to rewrite the bottom um, as um, oh, okay, I see. The function is given to us in terms of P, so let me just change these. It's kind of confusing. We do want that to be P, and 6P plus 1. I'm just changing this to be 1 half. All right, um, and we are trying to find the derivative of that. R prime of P. Let me change this both to P's. So the derivative is going to be using the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top is 90,000 and the derivative of the bottom, or the bottom with no derivative is 6p plus 1 to the 1 half. And we subtract um, the top and I'm running out of room here. Uh, times the derivative of the bottom. So it's going to be times 1 half times 6p plus 1 all to the negative 1 half over the bottom squared. So if you square this you're just going to get 6p plus 1. Well, let me see if I can write that out a little nicer. So we have r prime of p 
is equal to 90,000 times 6p plus 1 to the 1 half power minus 90,000p times 1 half times 6p plus 1 to the negative 1 half all over 6p plus 1. All right, the only problem is we forgot to, when we're taking the derivative of something with p in it, we have to also multiply by p prime. So we are missing some p primes here. When we took the derivative of 90,000 p, we needed, uh, let me do it in another color, we needed a p prime right here. And we also took the derivative with respect to p, ooh, actually we didn't, yeah, let me cross this all out, because there's another thing we forgot to take the derivative of the inside. So we need to multiply by 6 and by p prime. So I'm going to sneak p prime in right here. Since it's multiplication, it doesn't matter. All right, I think we finally have it. All right, and we plug in um, 260 and 3. Yeah, let me scratch that. Oh, that's interesting. All right, plugging all the numbers in. So P prime is 3. And P, they say, because that's the, the company has been increasing the price by $3 per month. So that's your P prime. And um, the, the amount, the price is 260 so we're going to get 6 times 260 plus 1 all to the 1 half minus 90,000 all right p is 260 p prime is 3 and then we have 1 half and I'm out of room again Um, then times 6 times 260 plus 1 all to the negative 1 half times 6 all over 6 times 260 plus 1. Now you have to be really careful putting this all in the calculator. I recommend doing the whole numerator, hit enter, and then divide by and make sure the bottom's in parentheses when you divide by the whole bottom. And if you do everything correctly, you should come up with 3419.09.